Okay, what is good, everybody? In this video, we're just going to be diving into the three books that have genuinely changed my fucking life. They've taught me everything from financial literacy, business literacy, to spiritual literacy, to neuroscience and psychology literacy. I think with these three, these three fields, you can literally conquer anything you've ever wanted to because, I mean, ultimately in life, it comes down to what? Three things. It comes down to your ability to be present, your ability to enjoy what you have now, your ability to understand why you think the way you think. And by doing that, you also become more conscious of your business decisions. And with the third book, The Millionaire Fastlane, you know what business decisions to make that are going to be more effective long term. So this video is going to be pretty unedited because that's how I like my videos. My videos are kind of made for people with good attention spans and here that are actually trying to soak up some valuable information rather than just get some quick hits of dopamine from pointless YouTube videos that add nothing to your life. These three books, I've read a lot of books. I have a giant bookshelf and these three, I think if you read these three, you will literally be set. Um, I'm going to give you a very good recap summary in this video. So try to stay to the end of all because I'm going to give you a recap of all three of them. But I do highly recommend you go and read them on your own because I haven't read these books in a long time. But after I've read these books, I'm like, dude, what else could I possibly need to know? And I know that's not a good mentality because you always want to be striving to learn more. But guys, the information in these books are fucking mad. It's mad. So let's start with The Power of Now. A lot of you guys have read The Power of Now. Uh, I'll read some of my highlights in here. But off the rip recap of this book, it talks about how everything is fake. Everything other than the absolute presence of this moment is completely an utter illusion. So when you think a thought, that thought is just an illusion. When you feel a feeling, that feeling is just an illusion. When you say you don't feel good, say you have a headache, that's just an illusion. It's not real. Your identification with it is what makes it real. So the whole book talks about how there are no problems, only things to be dealt with or things to be accepted. There are no such thing as bad, no such thing as good. It's completely perception. So let me just read some of these highlights here because Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, whatever, is an actual unreal author. So this is this is one of my favorite parts of the book here. Um, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for this? The moment you start watching the thinker, a higher level of consciousness becomes activated. You then begin to realize that there is a vast realm of intelligence beyond thought that thought is only a tiny aspect of that intelligence. You also realize that all the things that truly matter, beauty, love, creativity, joy, inner peace, all arise from beyond the mind. Does that, does that sink in? He's basically stating that you are not the one that's thinking. Once you become the observer of the noise and the observer of the thinking, another level of consciousness is activated. You become aware. And this is the problem with the majority of the planet is they lack the awareness of the thinker. They think that every thought they think is full heartedly them. And once you tap into this and you realize like, oh shit, I'm not the one thinking, I'm observing the thinking, then you are way less likely to be compulsive in impulsive with your emotions because you understand that you're not your emotions, you're watching your emotions. So ever since I deeply internalized that alone, I have gotten into so far less arguments. I don't get into arguments at all anymore because I realize the emotions that someone stirs up within me is just an illusion. It's not me. It's literally something. It's a phenomena to observe. That's all it is. And then you always react from a place of groundedness. So even if the voice is relevant to the situation at hand, it will interpret it in terms of the past. This is because the voice belongs to your conditioned mind. So you see and judge the present through the eyes of the past and get a totally distorted view of it. Now, I don't want to read every highlight of this book, but the highlights literally knock my socks off every time. Because although what you may be thinking about your current situation may seem accurate and prevalent, you are always going to be judging the present moment through the things that have happened in the past. So say you want to get into a relationship and a, you, you're, you're trying to trust this girl in your last relationship, the girl that you liked started talking to one of your friends. You are always going to judge 
the present based on what happened in the past. It happened to me for the longest time. And this book actually cured me of depression because of that, that alone. In your everyday life, you can practice this by taking any routine that is normal and giving it a means to an end and giving it your fullest attention so that it becomes an end to itself. So most of the things we do in our day-to-day -day life are just things that we just do to bang them out. Like we go to the gym just to do it. We wake up in the morning just to do it. We brush our teeth just to do it. What he's saying is that rather than having these things be a means to an end just to fucking get it over with, to do those things with your fullest attention and absolutely be there engulfed in that experience so that it becomes an end itself. Does that make sense? Because when you're not trying to rush things and you're not trying to just get to the end of it, you are at the end of it while doing it because of your presence. I know it's trippy shit. It's trippy shit. I hope you guys enjoy like the uncut. I feel like it's so much more like I'm connecting with the viewer than like just a bunch of edits. So the pain body, which is the dark shadow cast by the ego is actually afraid of the light of your consciousness. It is afraid of being found out. Its survival depends on your unconscious identification with it, as well as your unconscious fear of facing the pain that lives in you. But if you don't face it, if you don't bring the light of your consciousness into the pain, you will be forced to relive it again and again and again. The pain, the pain body may seem to like you, seem to you like a dangerous monster that you cannot bear to look at, but I assure you that is unsubstantial phantom that cannot prevail against the power of your presence. The pain body wants to survive. Just like every other entity in existence, it can only survive if you get, if it gets you to unconsciously identify with it. So your pain body is basically the ego that tries to get you to identify with all the negative thinking. That's your pain body. The one that constantly tries to bring up that thing that happened in the past that made you feel like shit, that made you in a negative headspace. What it's saying is that that can only live on if you unconsciously identify with it. If you don't become conscious of it, it's going to live on. So you need to become conscious of your thought patterns. What is making me think like this? I'm no longer going to identify with my ego because I'm done creating suffering for myself. Unconsciousness creates it. Consciousness transmutes it into itself. Everything is shown up by exposing it to light. And whatever exposed to the light itself becomes light. So guys, I could read countless, countless quotes from The Power of Now. Just a mind-boggling fucking book. But I think you need to go read it for yourself because there's nothing more important than absolutely being present. So during this video, if you've made it this far in the video, just continue to be present. You've already made it eight minutes into this video. Just continue to be grounded. You're doing great. So the millionaire fast lane. Um, I honestly think we should cover this one last. And let's go into You Are the Placebo. This is a fucking gnarly book. Um, oh, man, I don't even know where to begin with this one. Uh it basically explains, like, look at this. In this book, practically underlined everything in this book because it's just mad. So in this book, it gives countless, countless examples of how people have healed themselves just by believing that they were already healed. So it talks about the power of your mind and how your mind can heal everything. So let's, let's give an example. Um, when you cut your finger, the body needs to repair itself in the skin. The local physical trauma sends a signal to your genes from outside the cell. The gene turns on and makes the appropriate proteins, which then instruct stem cells to turn into healthy functioning skin cells. The traumatic signal is the information the stem cell needs to differentiate into the cell. Millions of processes like this occur all over our bodies all the time. Healing attributable, attributable to this type of gene expression has been documented in the liver, muscle, skin, intestines, bone marrow, and even the heart. So basically what he's saying is the body heals itself but we just need to allow it to heal itself. And he's saying that elevated motion is the actual prayer. That's probably the biggest lesson from this book is that you can think the, the prayer all you want, but if you are not feeling like the wish is already granted, nothing is going to happen. Feeling is a thing that in, influences the vibrational field around us. I have a tattoo on my left arm that basically reminds me of like every single thought that you think is changing your vibration. And depending on your vibration, will determine what you attract into your life. So if you want to be healthy, you have to believe that you are already healthy. If you want to be happy, you have to believe that you are already happy. If you want to cure something, you have to believe that it's already cured. If you want to manifest someone into your life, you have to believe that they are already into your life. If you want to manifest 
abundance into your life. You have to full heartedly elevate that emotion and believe I deserve this. It's coming to me. Everything I desire is coming my way. You have to believe it. You can say it all you want, but if you don't believe it, it doesn't mean shit. Um, so it goes on to give countless examples of how people were given like the placebo medicines, given treatment for like terminal cancer, supposedly, and they were given a placebo medicine that was supposedly going to cure them. Lo and behold, it cured them because they fully believed that it was going to cure them. So guys, this book is incredibly thick. As you can tell, it's all over the place. It gives a lot of specific studies and like actual pictures um, that show you how like the vibrational plane works and it's influenced. This will help you understand the world around you on a different level than anybody around you. It's madness. When I was, this is one of the few books. These are the three books that I've actually like had read themselves because they're so good. Definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm explaining these in the order that you need to read them because the power of now is pretty, it's pretty base level. A lot of people have a hard time you were the placebo is pretty fucking hard to read. You got to be patient, but the lessons are just so worth it. And then the millionaire fast lane, <coughs> um, I think is a perfect glue to these three because this will these two books will give you such a good understanding of the world, and then this book will give you a very good understanding of the business world. So in this book, the millionaire fast lane, by M. J. DeMarco, he talks about. Um, the slow lane versus the fast lane. And the slow lane is what society has basically fed to you. Society has fed to you, get a job that pays well, invest your money, and you'll be rich one day. He basically talks about how that is just incredibly, incredibly unlikely because so many things have to go perfectly for that to happen, right? And there's so few people that you'll ever meet that are actually wealthy that are like, yeah, I just invested my income. That does not make any sense. Um, so let me find some some quotes here. So the average 65 year old right now has $19,000 in the retirement fund. Um, that's fucking horrible. That's really bad. That's why you see 65 year olds working in Walmart because they 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 were in the slow lane. They expected the system to take care of them. So they just kept investing their paycheck, investing their paycheck. And they'll say some shit like, oh, if you invest your paycheck, in 30 years, it'll be worth 1.5 million. That is not accounting for if you're alive, if the stock market doesn't crash. So you're basically relying on so many different things to happen and go perfectly for you to get rich. And the whole premise of this book is you need to focus on things that which you can control, right? When you're when you're relying on the fucking stock market or your corporate job to get you rich, you are relying on everybody but yourself to get you rich. And that is exactly how you guarantee you don't get rich. It talks about how society has led you to believe that buying material items will make you feel rich when it's the exact opposite. It talks about if you're doing mental gymnastics over affordability, that means you can't afford it. If you're like, how can I afford this? I can do this and that and this, and then I can afford it. You can't afford it. You should be able to buy it no brainer if you can really afford it. Um, let me find my highlights. The slow lane forsakes the now for a faint promise of a wealthy future that exists only on paper and in brokerage accounts, not in a better lifestyle, not in more fiscal freedom and not in more joy than lying to yourself. Then you can play checkers anytime you want. So basically the slow lane guarantees a better life later than now. The fast lane is you spend two to three years working on your own business and then get to enjoy life when you're 26 versus 65. So it's a promise that has been broken countless times. Which experience is more important? The experience of a menial job designed to pay your bills or the experience and failures of creating something that could provide you financial freedom for a lifetime without ever having to hold a job again. If you don't control your income, you don't control your financial plan. Millions obediently seeing the employee Kumbaya believing that the job is central to supporting themselves. The COVID pandemic put millions of work in opened eyes. Sure, a job can support you, but is your goal only support? Do you want wealth or mediocrity? If your financial plan can be derailed by a pink slip or some government lockdown order, you're gambling. You aren't being real, you're being stupid. There's neither safety nor security in a job. And it's crazy 
because the majority of the masses wants to believe that a job is the safest thing. But a job is pure gambling. A job is more gambling than working for yourself, bro, because at least you know who's, who's paying your bills, where your money's coming from. Um, let me find a couple more good quotes here. I didn't highlight anything. God damn it. So this book has taught me a lot about business and financial literacy more than any other book I have read out there. Um, and one thing that I really took away from the millionaire fast lane was to build a subscription model. If I, if I was doing this from the time I started TikTok to now, I would be fucking retired already. But I wasn't because I didn't have the business literacy. And that's all right. You, you know, I was, I was a young kid. I, I was just trying shit out. I was literally just a kid making TikToks and COVID, getting 30 million views a month, which was absolutely fucking stupid. But what I learned is to make a subscription modeled product so that you can create passive income forever. Don't create a payment. Don't And you don't want to create clients. You want to create customers. Kind of like how Amazon has billions of customers that keep coming back to them and they all subscribe to Amazon Prime. Amazon is literally the perfect business to model your business off of because they treat their company, they treat their customers very well. They always come back. They have a subscription base and they are focused around the customer. So that's exactly why I switched over to a subscription based because one day I'll be able to have complete passive income or even potentially sell my company. So these three books are the three books that I would recommend you spend your next time on. Whatever book you're reading right now, stop it and read these ones because they're fucking madness. And yeah, if you guys want clarity on getting to the next level of your life, I created a software called Clarify to help you using the power of tech, using the power of AI to get clarity over your future. I'm going to be raising the price soon. I just wanted to really incentivize the, the people that fuck with me the most and getting in at the earliest, cheapest price. I'll put that in the description. I don't do sponsorships on my video for that reason, um, because I don't, I, I want to be able to promote my own things and not have to worry about brand deals and shit. But these are the three books that genuinely changed my life. And I deeply believe that they can change your life as well. So if you guys like this video, please drop a like, don't forget to subscribe and comment something. Comment Comment uh, your favorite book and why it was your favorite book. And let's, let's share the knowledge down in the comments. But much love, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.